In this video, I will show you how to find linear inequalities in two variables. Inequality um, are symbols, and they're represented by this less than, the greater than, less than or equal to, or greater or equal to symbols. Now, to start us off, uh, let's take a look at one variable first, and then we'll go to the two variables. So graphing on a number line. So when you see a less than or a greater than, and it doesn't have the line on the bottom, we're gonna show these solutions with an open dot. So for example, let's say that x is greater than two. I'm gonna put two in the middle of my number line. I don't have to put all the numbers, but I'll put one number on each side, so one and three. I'm gonna draw an open circle around two because it doesn't include two. And then here it says that x is greater than two. Greater meaning that it's bigger than. So I'm gonna draw an arrow coming from two, and then I'm gonna to point to the right. If it's less than or equal to, or greater or equal to, we're gonna use a closed dot on the graph. So for example, if x is less than or equal to two, I'm gonna plot my two again in the middle. This time I'm gonna draw a circle around two, but I'm going to color it in because it includes the number 2. Think of it as being closed and as coloring, it's including that number. This time it says x is less than 2. So less than means it's smaller. So I'm going to draw an arrow that points to the left to show all the numbers that are less than 2. Now when we're solving inequalities, um, the solution to an inequality are all the values that satisfy the inequality and make it true. So when you multiply or divide a negative number, uh, one of the things you must remember to do is you must reverse. And this is something that you probably learned from before. So reverse the inequality sign. So we're going to solve some um, single variable inequalities first. So we have negative 3x. We're going to solve it the same. <coughs> as if it were equal, sorry. We're going to subtract 8 from both sides, and this is going to be less than 3. Now we're going to divide by a negative number. We're going to divide by negative 3 on both sides. So then x is now going to be greater than negative 1. So when we graph this solution, we're going to place negative 1 in the center. I'm going to pick two numbers, one on each side. I'll pick 0 and negative 2. Since it doesn't have the equal line underneath, I'm going to draw an open circle at negative 1. And then it says that x is bigger than negative 1. So that bigger meaning that it's going to have all the solutions including, sorry, not including negative 1, but pointing to the right direction. All right, the second one here, uh, I'm going to get you to try that one on your own. All right, so let's go now to linear inequalities in two variables. So the solution to an inequality with only one variable, notice we can display that on a number line because if you think about it, the number line only represents our x. Now an inequality in two variables, x and y, means that we need to describe this region in the Cartesian plane. So the Cartesian plane is our x and y axis where we can plot points. So the ordered pair x and y is a solution to a linear inequality if the inequality is true when these values x and y are substituted into the inequality. So the set of the points that satisfy a linear inequality can be called the solution set. or the solution region. <coughs> All right, so let's take a look at this example here. Um, so we have this question where y is less than x minus three. So we wanna know if these four numbers, or sorry, not these numbers, if these four coordinates actually satisfy this expression. So remember that four is our x, our second number is our y, so that's zero. We're gonna plug, substitute those numbers into the inequality so we have zero is less than four minus three, zero is less than one. And we can see that's true. So that one's yes. If I plug in the next set, I have negative two is less than one minus three. 
So negative 2 is less than negative 2. Well, negative 2 is not less. They're actually the same number. So this is false. So this is not a solution. So that means that 1 negative 2 does not satisfy this inequality. Okay, I'm going to get you to try the other two on your own. All right, so now this brings us to graphing linear inequalities in two variables. Linear inequalities in two variables may be in one of the following four forms. So they all look the same. The only difference is that uh, we have a less than, a greater than, less than or equal to, or greater or equal to. So I'm going to explain what the steps are to graph and solve a linear inequality, and then we're going to take a look at it, some examples. Um, all right, so the first one here, um, steps to graph and solve a linear inequality. Uh, we're going to graph first the related equation. So pretending that we didn't have the inequality symbol, we're just going to pretend that inequality is actually just equals. Now, when we do this, it's going to divide the Cartesian plane, um, our coordinate system, into two regions. Now, if the inequality is less than or greater, so if it's one of these two here, we're going to use a dotted line when we draw the line. Because remember, these are lines here. If the inequality is less than or equal to, or greater or equal to, we're going to draw a solid line. Now, once you've done that, you need to decide which side of the line to shade by substituting a point. Don't use a point that's on the line, okay, because we know those satisfy. So we want to pick a point that's not on the line, and we're going to substitute into the inequality. If the inequality is true, we're going to shade the side that contains the point. If the inequality is not true, then we're going to shade the other side, which does not contain the point. So the solution for these type of questions, um, they contain an infinite number of solutions. You'll see why. Um, and it's going to be partially represented by the shaded area. And again, I will show you why I'm saying only partially. So for example, let's say I'm graphing x minus 3y is greater than 6. There's actually a couple of ways to graph, and I'm going to show you these two ways, just to remind you. So they're ways that you've actually learned already. Um, the method one, I'm going to use my slope y intercept form. Method two, I'm going to use intercepts. And it depends on what, <coughs> excuse me, it depends on what the question looks like. Um, one sometimes is quicker than the other. So I'm going to start with my x minus 3y is greater than 6. And I'm going to change it so that I have my y is going to be isolated. Hence, I'm going to have this into slope y intercept form. So notice when I divide by negative 3, I'm going to change my sign to greater to less than. And this will be 1 third x. 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. Okay. So I'm going to graph by plotting negative 2 onto my line, and my slope is 1 over 3, so I'm going to go 1 up and 3 over. Or 1 down and 3 to the left. Now notice this is a less than, it's not equal to, so I am going to draw a dotted line that goes through these points. Please use a ruler when you're doing this. Now, a test point. <coughs> The test point that's probably the easiest to choose is 0, 0, because it's easy to plug that into the inequality. So I'm going to use a test point of 0, 0. Now, I don't have to use my slope y intercept form in case I actually did it incorrectly. So I'm going to go back to my original question at the top. Actually, hold on. Uh, I think, you know what, we will actually use this just to show you something. So I'm going to go 0 is less than 0 minus 2 and so we have 0 is less than negative 2 so 0 0 is here and 0 is not less than negative 2 this is false so therefore I'm not going to shade the point where 0 0 is since 0 0 doesn't satisfy this inequality so I'm now going to shade in the other side which is the bottom half and I'm just going to color it in now, if you look, you can see maybe why there's an infinite number of solutions, because all of these points down here, if I plug them in, they will work into this equation, okay? So, therefore, 
there's an infinite number of solutions. And I call it partial because this is only part of them. I can actually keep coloring on and on and on down to the bottom and stuff. But we're, all, we're not going to do that because that will take a long time. So just by coloring the bottom part of this grid here, um, that is enough to show that that is the solution set to this inequality. Now I'm going to go back to what I said before. So when I put my test point, I can actually plug it into my um, inequality here or what I have originally. But I'm going to show you something in a little bit why it's actually nicer to go back to my line to plug it in. All right, uh, let me show you method two, which is using intercepts. Uh, using intercepts means we're going to find out what's the y-intercept when x is zero. So we have negative three y equals six. So y equals negative two. So one of my points is zero, negative two. If y equals zero, I have x equals six. So my other point is six, zero. So plotting these numbers, I get six and zero, zero, negative two. And just connecting these two points, I get a line as well. Now make sure you use a ruler so that this is a lot more accurate than what I'm using here since I can't use a ruler to draw here. All right, so then we do the testing point thing just like what we did before. Um, and we're going to shade in the bottom part. Right. Now, as a general rule, if you isolate y on the left side of the equation, just like how I've done it here, notice this is y is less than. So that means all the y values that we want are smaller or they're less than this expression here. So if you think of it in terms of y, this is our y-axis, right? And if this is where our line is, all the values that are less than that line would be down here. So that is why we shade below. So if it says y is greater than the line or greater or equal to the line, we're going to shade above the line. But if this is less than or less than or equal to, we're going to shade below the line. So it does work if you want to plug it into the original. But if you look at the equation after you've isolated the y and you have y on the left side, we can decide whether we're going to shade above or below just simply by looking at the symbol. Um, to double check it, you can choose a test point to check your solution. Uh, but make sure that you don't choose a point that's on the line. And then 0, 0 is always a convenient point to choose uh, because it's easy to plug it in. Let's do one more example and I'll show you what I mean. So let's do example B here. So I'm going to isolate my y value. I'm going to go negative 2x plus 6. And I'm dividing by negative 3. So again, I'm going to change my symbol oops, to be greater or equal to. So we get two-thirds x and then minus two. All right, since it's already nicely in slope by intercept form, I'm going to graph my negative two and then go two up and three over. Or two down and three to the left. Now notice this time it has the equal to symbol. So I'm going to connect all my points with a line and it's going to be a solid line. So I'm going to plug in my test point, which is zero, zero. And when I plug this in, I have zero is greater than zero minus two. And that's true, zero is greater than negative two. So that means zero, zero is over here. That means I'm gonna shade the side where zero, zero is. So I'm gonna color all of this part at the top. And then I'm just gonna double check or show you, notice how it says y is greater than. So notice this is my line here, and then I did shade all the values that are greater than the line. 